So you have a dream team of developers to work on your software project. You have UI experts and a professional project manager. But if you have such a great team, why would you need quality assurance? Hi everyone, my name is Sergey and I am QA lead at Mobidev. To understand the importance of QA and value it brings to a software project, let's start with defining the goal of testing and busting some myths about it. Some people believe that the goal of testing is to find each and every bug in the project, but that's just impossible. Modern software is very complex. It often consists of lots of search frameworks, plugins, APIs that are used as they are. Moreover, modern software is often influenced by the environment, such as hardware, operation system, browser, etc. To test all combinations of input, it would take almost eternity. Another popular definition is to create a high-quality product. But if you look at QI engineers' work, you'll understand that they actually don't create anything. They don't draw wireframes, they don't code. Yet another myth is that the goal of testing is to assure the quality of the product. But one person cannot be responsible for the quality of the teamwork of the whole team. It's a shared responsibility. So, how can we define the actual goal of testing? For our company, it is to provide information about current product status to those whose opinion matches. It means to those who can make decisions either to allocate resources for fixing found issue or postpone it as a low priority one. This is what QA engineers aims to do at their work. And this is how you can describe what skills should a good QA have. In my opinion, among lots of technical and soft skills, there are only two that really matches – ability to ask questions and think critically. Why this? Because to achieve goal of finding problems and letting concerned people know about them, testing should be performed as exploring, not chatting. Let me explain you the difference. Imagine that we have a piece of software ready for testing. Let it be a loading screen with email and password fields and loading button. There are certain questions asked by QA engineers and each of them defines a new test. What is the functionality of the screen? Should I be logged into the app if I use correct email and password? And what if I use a non-valid email without add sign? Should it show me an error alert? Should it highlight the input field with red? Should it give me a hint about valid email format? And what if I try to log in with a valid but unregistered email? Should it say user not found? Or should it say incorrect password? Are these two different alerts for unregistered email and registered email with incorrect password? And what if I forgot my password? How do I restore it? Answers to these questions can be found in product documentations and they give expected results to test. This is exploration of the software, where real value of QA shows. If something goes wrong during exploration, it may mean a problem. The issue is locked into bug tracker and the bug is fixed. And now, QA needs to check whether the fix is correct and hasn't broken any already tested functionality. It's necessary to rerun the same checks again. And later, after fixing some issues, after adding some new functionality, to check once more if everything still works. This almost matches Einstein's definition of insanity. One more crucial detail. If you have a small project that can be developed within six months, QA engineers won't be buried under the massive scope of regression chatting. There will be enough time for exploring. But if you have a long-term project, the sooner you start thinking about test automation, the more time will be saved in future. The next question, when QA engineer should join the project? The answer is simple. The sooner, the better. Let's see what QA engineer does at each stage of the project and what values these activities bring. Analysis. The stage where requirements are gathered and defined. QA test them to make sure that they are clear and specific with no uncertainty. That they are measurable in terms of specific values. That they are testable with evaluation criteria for each requirement. And that they are complete without any contradictions. Design. As soon as any wireframes are available, it's time for QA engineer to test them. They do not evaluate usability or color palette, that's designer's work. Instead, they are looking for missed functionality, lost requirements, mistakes, etc. Development. When the requirements and analysis are approved, but there's still no app to test, QA engineers start planning testing. The main goal of this stage is to prepare a minimum number of tests that will cover most possible cases in the app. 
Different test design techniques like equivalent partitioning or pairwise testing are used. All these tests are written down as checklists or test cases depending on project needs. Checklists prevent missing any critical check in future or during regression testing. All the work at every stage is preventive. Once QA engineer thinks of some tricky and obvious flow of action, and let's be honest, during early stages of development, almost every flow of actions except happy path is unobvious. Developers will consider this during their work. Every prevented issue is a huge amount of saved time. Once QA engineer stumbles upon a bug, it takes some time to investigate issue, create a bug report. Then it takes developer time to read the bug report and fix the issue. Then again, QA verifies the fix and makes sure it didn't break anything previously working. And if something goes wrong, the whole circle with reporting the issue and fixing it starts again. There is another vital QA activity. They help the team to prioritize issues by defining their severity. When there's a lot of issues in the project, it's crucial to concentrate work on fixing urgent things and not wasting time on working on low priority issues. Yet another responsibility of the QA is to analyze users' feedback and statistics after the first release or during beta testing. And knowing when the user starts helps to update the environment and concentrates testing efforts only on what really matters. As a conclusion, let's summarize everything that we learned about QA engineers. Their goal is to provide team with information about project status. Take note, we are talking not about some monthly or weekly reports, but about continuous communication process. The greatest benefit brought by QA is that defects can be prevented before they are implemented. It takes way less time to edit specifications or to include solution in code than to rewrite it trying to fix something. In other words, QA helps to prevent issues and save your time and money from the very beginning of the project, during development, and even after the product release. Thank you for watching and stay tuned with MobyDev.